This is the story of the very great mystery I had to solve. It was the greatest mystery in the world, and not a little mystery. I know lots of little mysteries. I do not know why my best friend Ryan eats guinea pig food at lunchtime, because it tastes horrible. I do not know why my dad's shop had a very rude sign on the front of it. And I do not know why our green rubbish bins are for rubbish, which is mainly brown. And our brown rubbish bins are for rubbish that is mainly green. That makes no sense at all. But I know that these are all examples of little mysteries, because no one else except me is bothered by them. I have lots of mysteries because of the invisible rules. But I am also certain about one thing. I am certain that there is a monster under my bed. It's the same with all those kids. You've probably heard this before. But the difference is, I know my monster is real. I am George Michael Smith, and this is the story of the monster under my bed, and how I encountered the weird man in a white suit. It all started when my dad tucked me into bed seven nights ago. As I recall, it was a Thursday, and I had my glass of chocolate milk. I was tucked up in bed, and Dad was reading me a bedtime story. When he finished, he kissed me goodnight as he got up to turn my light off. I said, Don't! Don't what? Don't turn the light out. If you do, the monster will get me. That was true. If Dad did turn the light out, I knew the monster would come out from under my bed and eat me. So I had to try and make him see sense. But my dad being my dad said the same thing as he always says to me. We've been over this, George. There is nothing under your bed. There is nothing in the wardrobe. There are no such things as monsters. All right? And so I reply, I guess... Good. Now, try to go to sleep because you've got to get up in the morning and go to school. Good night, buddy. That moment when you're left alone in the dark is the single most terrifying experience of a child's bedtime. Anything could come up from the bed sheets at any moment and eat me. I froze. I watched. I listened. Silence. Then, a few seconds later, I saw it from a glimmer, a shape of shining reflection in the glass mirror of my wardrobe. So, what do I do? I do what any brave little boy would do. I got out of my bed and tiptoed very quietly across the room. Whilst I took a look around, I approached the wardrobe, and then, very slowly, I opened my wardrobe wide. Darkness there, and nothing more. I then grabbed a torch and checked under my bed. Nothing there either. At least, not what I could see. I knew the monster was hiding somewhere in my bedroom. I just couldn't think where or why. But I knew if no one was going to believe me, I had to find another monster myself. Last Saturday was a very different kind of day. My school was closed because school is always closed on a Saturday. And my mum was going out with her sister on a hen night in London, which wasn't at night and had nothing to do with hens at all. Though she did come home with a box of chicken and chips from the shop at the corner, which she dropped on the floor and started to cry. I get sad over dead animals sometimes, and only when they are just dead. Just like our cat Molly, who got run over outside our house and had guts all over the road like sausages on a string. But I've never cried over fried chicken. Anyway, my dad thought it would be a good idea to take me to his work. 
which is a department store which sells nails, lawn mowers, and gardening equipment, and big long planks of wood, and baths which you can't wash yourself in because they're not attached to anything. Dad, your shop still says do it yourself on the front. You haven't changed it yet. Look, George, I told you so many times. Do it yourself is a very rude thing to say. You must put a please on the end or something because then you wouldn't offend customers. Please put this jacket on, George. Why? Because I've asked you to. Come on, put it on. You're supposed to be helping me today. It says Bruce on it. Bruce is not my name. I know. Bruce isn't here today, so you can borrow his jacket. But what if the customers here get confused and start calling me Bruce? They won't. But what if they do? They won't. Okay, but what if they do? Hey, I have an idea. Why don't you take this duster and dust around the store? That's a good lad. And try not to get in the way of customers, all right? Hello? Uh, hello. My name is not Bruce, in case you're wondering. Um, okay? It's George Michael Smith, and I am 13 years, 8 months, 12 days, and 18 minutes old at the time of me telling you this. Oh, right. You are looking at candles. Yes, they're very nice. When you light them, they smell nice. Let me show you. Oh, no, thank you. That won't be necessary. I was only having a look. I'm only doing my job to tell people my name isn't Bruce and to help customers. Do not light candles in shops. That is an invisible rule. And invisible rule are rules, which no one tells you about until you break them. And then everyone annoyingly gets cross with you and tells you that you shouldn't have broken the rule, even though they didn't tell you the rule in the first place. My dad got very angry with me for breaking the invisible rule I did not know about. And because I was wet and the alarm hurt my ear, I did that thing I did when things get too much for me to cope. And that is, roll up into a ball, a hair chop, and scream until the alarm stopped. By the time that the alarm did eventually stop, Dad, Dad's boss, Mr. Grumble, walked in and said he'd like a chat with my dad. I had to wait in the car for a very long time, which wasn't convenient for me, because I only had my school books to read, which I didn't read because I wasn't at school. After a very long wait, my dad finally got in the car, looked at me with a very disappointed look on his face, and said to me, George, you don't belong on this planet. Well, he might have said it in that kind of way, but he might have said it in a, George, you don't belong on this planet, sort of way. But I think it was the first way, because when you tell someone something important, like, you're not from this planet, then it should be said in the proper way. Did you tell anyone at school about the monster? No, Dad. You said not to. You did, didn't you? No, Dad. The monster under the bed has always been our secret. I'd like to believe you, George, but I just can't. I've always wanted to trust you, but I just can't. You've let me down too many times. So we went home. Dad sent me to bed without any dinner, and then he phoned Mum and got her to come home early from her hen night so he could have an argument with her. I had stopped to wonder if Mum was telling Dad off for telling me that I was from another planet. Maybe that's why I break all of the invisible walls. Because people who are from this planet are born with all the invisible walls planted in their heads. I sat in my room with only the toys in my toy box to play with, which I didn't want. I was bored, but Dad said I couldn't come out of my room as punishment for what I did in the shop. I could only leave to go to the toilet. Moments later, I came down to get a glass of water, and I saw Dad on his way out, putting on his leather jacket and black boots on. My mum said, Where do you think you're going? The pub?
Obviously. I suspected he wasn't going to the pub at all. I suspected he wasn't go he was going out with his mates for football, the way my mum doesn't like. Anyway, Dad wasn't himself. I could tell something wasn't quite right. I went to Mum and said, Mum, where's Dad gone? She didn't answer me. She went back into the kitchen and cried. I got my glass of water and went back up to my room. Later that night, I was awoken by a rumbling sound coming from outside. I looked outside my window to investigate and I saw a man in a white suit climb over the fence. Then a girl climbed over the fence and she, I distinctly remember, she was wearing a yellow top and long black trousers. Did you find anything? No, nothing but scrap. Just a discharged car battery, a rusty chain, and a really angry dog called Bernard. Well, it was definitely this address. I sat by my window and watched them for a while. And as I was doing so, I scratched my head because that is what I do when I'm thinking and making a collateral conclusion. The following morning, I woke up and came downstairs. Mum was quiet, and a policeman who lived at the end of our street was in the living room talking to me. A few moments later, he got off, took his hat, and left. After he left, I asked Mum, Mum, where's Dad? George, I'm afraid he's died. What? He... He was out in the street last night, and he was crossing the road, and a passing car came out right in front of him. The ambulance couldn't get there in time. What? Are you alright, George? Would you like a hug? No, thank you. That doesn't make sense, really. People don't die when you're not looking. They do. Not on television. This isn't television. But this doesn't make sense. It never does. A anyway, can you tell me where, when he's coming back? He's not coming back, George, I'm afraid. Or she would have said it like... He's not coming back, George, I'm afraid. Although, I think she said it in an upset way, because the other way would sound like she was angry with me, which makes no sense. Later that day, there was a knock at the door. George! Get the door! I'm in the shower! I went downstairs and answered the door, to find the same man in the white suit standing in the doorway. Hello, young man. And what's your name? George Michael Smith. Well, George, it's nice to meet you. I'm the doctor, and this is my friend, Cara. Hi, George. We'd like to speak to you about your dad. George, get away from the door. I'll handle this. Yes, what do you want? Sorry to bother you, but we need to talk about his father. Yes, I heard you. It's very important. You're from the council, aren't you? Social workers. <laughs> Madam, do we look like... Yes, that's right. We're social workers. Just checking in and making sure everything's all right. Aren't we, Doctor? Sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. It's too early to talk to George about his dad. Pat went to football because he lost his job. He always used to go out and play football with his mates before the shop made him work Saturdays. George must have told someone about the monster under his bed. I don't want George to think this was his fault. Tell us about this monster, Mrs Smith. It's very important. It's nothing. Just a silly story which goes out. Got out of hand. And the other children got involved and... I don't want George to think any of this was his fault, okay? Mrs Smith, prepare yourself for a shock. George didn't tell anyone about the monster. He didn't. No. Well, then how did... We have reason to believe that the monster itself informed on your husband. You know sometimes when you talk to yourself, what if you're not, not what? What if it's not you you're talking to? Proposition. What if no one is ever really alone? What if every single living being has a companion, a silent passenger, a shadow? That prickling on the back of your neck is the breath of something standing close behind you. Are we ever alone? 
And he's talking about, we intercepted a message beamed from this location to this address. It said, come to 121B Middlesville Drive and learn something about Patrick Smith. Look in the back garden. It was broadcast on a frequency used by an alien life form, which we believe to be currently living under your son's bed. Now, if you know something about the alien and you're not telling us, then you are being very irresponsible, and the whole planet could be in great danger. If you change your mind, we'll be at the telephone box at the end of the road. Great. Thanks a lot. Me? What did I do? I was just starting to get through to her. But as usual, you had to go and ruin everything, bragging on about aliens and how the planet could be in imminent danger. I never said imminent. Although I confess I do like the word imminent, and I may use it next time. That night, I was lying in bed when a noise from the street woke me up. I sat up in bed and went to the window where I could see the very same girl outside in our back garden. So I thought I'd ask her what her and her friend in the white suit were doing. Excuse me, what, what are you doing down there? Nothing. Uh, I was just, um... What was your name again? George. George Michael Smith. Oh. Hi, George. Um, why are you awake at this time of night? I was looking to see what you were doing. George? Yes? Is your mum awake? She's fast asleep. She takes sleeping pills to help her sleep. Listen, George, um, would you mind opening the back door and letting me in? Why would I do that? Because I think I might be able to help you with the problem you're having with the monster under your bed. Wait there. I'll get the key. Hello? Hello. Do you want to take me up to your room? How can you help me? I know all about monsters hiding under people's beds. I'm an expert at it. Nice room. You know, you should have more than one chair. What do you do when you have friends come round? They sit on the bed. And you think there's something underneath it? Yeah. George, everyone thinks that sometimes. It's just how people think at night. Why? Do you have nightmares? About something coming up under the bed and grabbing you? You have, haven't you? You've had nightmares exactly like it. You know what's under there? What? Nothing. See for yourself. I check it most nights. There's nothing there. Then if there is a monster, how do you know it exists? Can you keep a secret? Because it makes the world go cold. Where is he? What? I can't find him anywhere. Can't find who? Wally! I've looked all over this page. Nothing. Can you see Wally, George? He's not in every book. Really? That's a few years of my life I've been eating back. Tell me. Are you scared? Very scared. Good. You should be. Listen to me, George. The monster under your bed, does it scare you? Yes. How so? I don't know. That's just it. You don't know. It's that uncertainty, that cultural anxiety inflicting on a nightmare. Whatever this creature is, it's real. It's very real. It's alien, and it wants you to fear it. But that's okay, because fear is not so bad. Not really. You think your monster's scared, George? No, monsters don't get scared. I thought as much. Passes your torch. Quickly. Thank you.
What are you going to do? In a simpler way, scare it off. Force it to come out from under the bed. I think whatever this creature is, it's sensitive to light. I'm going to force it to come out from underneath the bed. Will that work? I hope so, George. I don't know how, but... I received a distress call about a young boy having a problem with a monster under his bed. And I can't ignore that. Something has come here for a reason. And I'm here to find out why the monster has come here and what for. <sighs> I saw it. You saw the monster? Oh yes. And it's terrifying. We need to go. Why? What's wrong? Because that monster hasn't gone. It's moved. Moved to where? George, I think you'd better come with us. Why? Don't worry. We'll look after you and get you back here before you know it. Where are we going? You'll see. Welcome to the TARDIS, George. Now don't touch anything. Leave all the levers and knobs to me, okay? Okay. This is cool. I, I like it. Everyone always does. I can't quite describe it. It's bigger inside than out. More on that later. Now, George, I want you to spread your hand upon this tablet there. You see the screen with the handprint outline? Yes. Touch it, and the TARDIS will scan your DNA. And what will this prove? I'm hoping by latching onto George's DNA he could be the missing link to helping us track down the creature. Right, George, as soon as I pull this lever, the TARDIS will start to take off. And once we're in flight, you place your hand upon the tablet and the TARDIS will scan your body pattern, okay? Okay, I guess... This is way cooler than school. Trust me, school doesn't come near it. Ready? Now! Ooh. Steady old girl. Looking onto the coordinates now. Huh. Well, we've arrived. Yes, but where? St. John's Children's Hospital. There are many children, many beds. So we have to hurry. The monster will lurk round here for long. Right now, Kara, you and George check the wards on the far end, and if you spot anything suspicious, give me a shout. Will do. What are you doing? Are you the caretaker here? Yes. But who are you? Inspection. Inspection? It's half past one in the morning. Exactly. What better time? Tell me. Do you often work nights? Only on Wednesdays and Fridays. Why? No reason. I just wondered. Have you checked the rooms? I'm sorry, I'm not following. Have you checked all the rooms yet? No. Look. The kids are fine. They're fast asleep. The kids are in danger. What do you mean, in danger? Look. I can't see anything. Yes, exactly. Nothing. Can I borrow your lamp? Of course. Good. Come with me. Why? Because I need you to be my wingman. What was that? It's okay. It's okay. It was nothing. Just... Listen, George, I know things might seem scary now, but there's nothing here that can harm us. There's nothing in the dark that can hurt you, that can hurt either of us. I saw something. Where? Over there, look. But there's nothing there. I'm telling you, I saw it. Whereabouts did you see it? It was only for a second, but it passed me by from the corner of my eye. It, it went from that room into one of the wards. Which ward? That one, on the far end. Okay, we'll tread carefully. I'm scared. If I'm honest, so am I. 
the monster is under that bed. Good. What? Ow! What'd you do that for? You gave me a fright, you moron. Sorry. Are there any other children in this room? No! Good. This is Bill. He's the caretaker. Hi. Bill, you can go back to your work now. We shouldn't be very long. Alright. Give me a shout if you need anything. George, which bed is the monster under? That one. You sure? Yes. Good. I'm going to take a closer look. Be careful. I'm always careful. What do you see? Nothing. As of yet. This creature thinks fast and is quick. Cara, do you have a mirror that I could use? Yeah, why? I need it. What are you going to try and do? Try out a little experiment. I want to see if the creature or whatever this being is reflects on the darkness of glass. If I'm successful, we should be able to see it only for a second or two. It's a horrible monster. No, not horrible. Not necessarily, anyway. Creatures from other worlds and other life forms fall through the dimensions of time and come to Earth all the time. If not by intention, then by accident. Whatever this creature is, it's probably more scared of us than we are of it. So what do we do now? I need to try and communicate with this creature. I don't think it's the sort of talking type. It's probably trying to get away, get back to its home world. That's my logical conclusion on the matter anyway. But, of course, I could be wrong. There's only one way to find out anyway. Kara, pass us your mirror. Thank you. George, keep a lookout for this creature. Okay. No doubt, you'll be the first person who sees it first. I need you to be my eyes and ears. Can you do that? I'll try. You're a good boy. And a very brave boy. Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. Good. <gasps> George? I saw it. What did it look like? It was like a ghost. We well, don't have to be scared now. Whatever it was, it appears to have gone now. Sure. We'll just check. I'm addressing the creature under the bed. I apologise. I do not know your name or the name of your species, but... What I do know... is that you're lost. Are you lost? Are you trying to get back somewhere? If you're lost, I can help you. If that's what you want. If you can acknowledge us, please give us a sign. It's gone. Where? Away. For now. I think. What do you think it was? No idea. That's a first. Something you don't know. Please don't. How do I know it won't go back under my bed again? You don't. We should probably get you home. You all will be wondering where you are. And that concludes this story. My name is George Michael Smith, and I'm a boy who likes to solve mysteries. Mysteries such as the mystery of the monster under the bed, and the mystery of my absent father, and the mystery of the strange man called the Doctor in a white suit at the bottom of the garden. I do not know what the monster under my bed was, but I did know there was something there. Or maybe there are just some things in this world that are better off just not knowing about. All I can do now is offer the other children out there some advice based on my own experience. Before you go to bed, ask yourself 
What's that in the mirror? Well, the corner of your eye. What? What's that footstep following? Never passing by. Perhaps it's something waiting until we're all dead. Out they'll come, the monster, from underneath the bed.